One of the most horrific stories in recent years was the revelation of Dr. Kermit Gosnell's House of Horrors. His crimes against the unborn and the newly born were so severe that he is now in prison for his crimes. To the shame of the secular media, they primarily ignored this story completely. The volatile trial, the the accusations of his attorney that this is a targetist, elitist, and racist prosecution of a doctor who's done nothing but give back to the poor and the people of West Philadelphia. The media, secular media, almost completely overlooked this, in particular the liberal media. But now he's in jail. You want to talk about a lesson in self-deception? He's in jail His son comes to him, did you really do these terrible things? He reads through the Bible, and after reading through the Bible, he now finds comfort for his actions. Listen to what he had to say. My youngest son asked me, Dad, did you do these horrible things that are in the newspaper? And I said, "Uh, Alex, I don't want to lie to you. I really have to do a lot of reading to feel comfortable that... I, in fact, was on on solid ground in my thoughts and my approaches. And until I really completed my first Genesis to Revelation reading of the Bible, which I did since I was incarcerated, I really didn't feel as comfortable as I am. Genesis begins almost, uh, I think it's Genesis 2-7, expresses the breath of life as the beginning of life. That... God breathes breath, breathes life into to Adam. The Bible, to me, is very clear that life does not happen until breath. I very strongly believe in my innocence, and there are many people who believe that. There are many people who come to me who say that, how could you be this terrible person, and, and people are coming to you for 40 years. The story just doesn't make sense. Now, now here's the real shocking thing. We're not just talking about your average abortion doctor and the atrocities they are guilty of against children in the womb. But we're talking about someone who who allegedly joked as he snapped the spinal cords of babies, who, who killed babies once they were out of the womb, once they had breath, once they were breathing. Forget what he just said about life starts with breath. They were breathing. We're, we're talking about accounts of, quote, infant beheadings and severed babies' feet. This is horrific. And yet he reads the Bible and finds comfort. Put aside the complete misinterpretation of Scripture for a minute. Let's think about the self-deception. It reminds me of the Nazis. I've read a lot of Holocaust literature. And the Nazis' treatment of their prisoners, of Jewish men, women, and children, and others, utterly barbaric, utterly inhuman. I don't understand how a a human being, a feeling human being, could do what they did to children and babies. I mean, you're talking about having people dig a pit. They dig this giant pit, and then you have them stripped down, and then you shoot them. They, 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 They set the pit on fire, and then you shoot them, and the people fall into the burning flames. Here's a little baby. Here's, here's a one-year-old child. Why waste a bullet on it? Just throw the baby in the flames. The Nazis did that. And that's one of many atrocious, horrific things they did. But then these same Nazis would go home and play with their children. Oh, baby has a boo-boo. Come to daddy and give him a tender hug. And the wife was discouraged. And the the husband put the arm around her and encouraged her because they were caring human beings and they were murderers. The extraordinary nature of self-deception. Some of them would go to church and sing the hymns and read the Bible and find justification for what they were doing. Dr. Kermit Gosnell, shame on you, sir, for using God's word to justify your crimes against his creation. As for Adam and Eve, they were never in the womb. They were created by God, so they came alive when he breathed into them. It wasn't just breath, it was his animation as well, his his life going into them. But sir, according to the court records, you killed babies that were alive as well. They were breathing. And the Bible makes clear that when God creates us now, he starts in the womb. Read Psalm 139, sir, over and over and over until it dawns on you that that God carefully formed those limbs that you tore up and the spinal cords that you, you severed and those heads that you lopped off. God carefully formed that human being that you slaughtered 
in the womb and you did it for pay. Take that to heart, sir. Jeremiah chapter 1, God says to the prophet, before I formed you in the womb, that's the same word for form, the same Hebrew word for form that's used in Genesis 2 when God formed man out of the dust of the earth. Now he forms man and woman in the womb. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And, and read Luke, the first chapter, John the Baptist, just as a baby in his mother's womb, leaps. Why? Because he's already filled with the Spirit. And Mary, Miriam, the mother of Jesus, comes into the room and she's pregnant with the Messiah. She's pregnant with a human being, the Messiah. And John, in, 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 in his mother's womb, senses it and jumps in his womb. Sir, you're misreading the Bible to justify your sin. Here's what you need to do. Alone in your prison cell, come into the stark reality that you have been guilty of murder. Not once, but many times. And then come to the amazing reality that Jesus died for those sins, those sins of murder. And then cry out for mercy. Cry out for forgiveness. Jesus can forgive you. You can be locked in your prison cell and free on the inside, but deceive yourself no longer.